This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. I am so excited for today's guest because she's been one of my favorite actresses for over 30 plus years. She is a legend, a zealot in show business, and I am talking about Sally Kirkland, the woman, the myth, the legend. Oh my God, she has had just these wonderful zealot like moments in her career, you know. She was mentored by um, Shelley Winters, her godmother. She studied with Lee Strasberg and Uta Hagen. Uh, she hung out with Andy Warhol's crew for a bit, and she was in a short film where she was strapped to a chair, The 13 Most Beautiful Women. She was the first naked lady on stage in Broadway. She's been in so many great movies. Uh, I wish we could get to all of them, but we can't. You know, she's in all the Roger Corman exploitation movies like Big Bad Mama and Crazy Mama. She was in... The Way We Were, Stars Born, Barbara Streisand, The Sting, Blazing Saddles, um, Private Benjamin, Fatal Games, Anna, which she won a Golden Globe for and was Academy Award nominated for, uh, Best of the Best with Eric Roberts, Two Evil Eyes, George Romero uh, horror anthology movie, directed by Dario Argento, the Black Cat segment, and um, recently she did uh, 80 for Brady. And um, she's also an ordained minister and acting teacher, and it's going to be a great conversation today. I cannot wait. I talked to her on the phone and recorded last night and a week ago. She's such a sweet lady. It's going to be a great conversation today. So yeah, here is my interview with Sally Kirkland. Tommy? Hey, Sally. Welcome to the show. How are you today? Thank you. I'm good. You? I am just spectacular. I, I can't begin to tell you what an, uh, what an honor this is because I've been a devoted fan of Sally Kirkland for 30 plus years, and I thank you so much for taking the time today. Oh, yeah. Thank you for having me, Sally. My pleasure. So, going back in time, I know that uh, your mother was a fashion editor in the magazine business, and your dad was in the scrap metal business. At what age did you start gravitating toward acting? I think 10. Mm -hmm. I, I, I went to something called the Valley Camp, the Valley Drama Camp, when I was 10. And I did, uh, I did little portions of Midsummer Night's Dream by Shakespeare. And, and then I was the president of the drama club in uh, pre-high school and high school. Uh, uh, yeah, high school. Mm -hmm. Prep school. And so... I was tall, and I played men all the time. Yeah. <laughs> they were all, all girls' schools. And then I started making money when I was 18. Wow. So you got involved in school plays and community theater growing up? Yeah. 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 And uh, what they call summer stuck. And um, your mom got, got you into being a Vogue model for a while? When I was a child, yeah. Yeah. And, and a teenager, yeah. They did a, a story on me going to Europe and the clothes I would wear, and it was something like one, two, three, maybe four pages of me in Vogue at the age of 15 on my way to Italy. Wow. Um, yeah, she was great at putting me on runways and in uh, Look Magazine and Life Magazine and Vogue Magazine, et cetera. That must have been a yeah. lot. Of, must have been a lot of fun and exciting uh, being a kid and learning about life so young that way. Yeah, I was very privileged, and she was the first person to bring Italian fashions to America. Mm -hmm. She got the Medal of Solidarity from the Italian government, and uh, she was the first person to feature uh, a black photographer, Gordon Parks, and a black model. Um, she was way ahead of her time. It sure sounds like it. So, one of the greatest actresses of all time, Shelley Winters, was your godmother and mentor. Yeah. What What did she teach you that you still use to this day when you're playing a part, or even you know, teaching acting or living life? Yeah, she taught me when they when they think they're going to laugh, make them cry. When they think they're going to cry, mm. make them laugh. Mm. You know, always have it. Um, what do I want to say? So 
that the audience doesn't know what's going to happen next. That's interesting. Yeah, that that, that is good advice. I, I'm sure you miss her every day, I imagine. You know, it's, it's interesting you bring her up. I was just reading last night an interview, a man named Jeff Kramer. Oh, yeah. I uh, did with me talking about Shelley, I think, and other things. But um, Shelley was my second mom, for sure. She adopted me when I was 18 mm. and, and put me in the actor's studio. And um, she liked younger men, and a lot of times we shared the same men. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. Love it. Yeah, she was so funny. I remember one time she was on a Dean Martin roast for Telly Savalas, and she was talking about when they made that movie, The Scalp Hunters, and she said, Telly saved me from being molested. He forgot my hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I remember being saved from Telly Savalas. I think I did Kojak about three times, Yeah, and I'd end up in his suite at the Universal shirt and, and um, there was always women, women, women. But I, 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 I did escape um, his advances. Yeah. Um, but Shelley was um, a huge uh, um, inspiration to me. She, she had me reading the newspapers from the age of, you know, like I said, 18 every day. So she said, you can't be a good actor if you don't know what's going on in the world. And um, she uh, she moderated at the actor's studio when Lee Strasberg didn't. And, um, right. and she was my strongest critic. You know, sometimes she'd scream at me mm -hmm. if I was faking something rather than doing method acting, truth, and all that. I, I miss her a lot. Um, she was a huge influence on me. And then as a minister, which I am, I got to do her last rites mm -hmm. and, and uh, lead her memorial service for 350 people at Paramount. Um, and uh, marry her to her longtime companion, Jerry DeFord, uh, right before she died. That's beautiful. That is really beautiful. Then, uh, so when you attended the actor's studio, who were your classmates there? Um, Bobby De Niro. I got Bobby to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, De Niro and um, Al Pacino and Dustin Hoffman. Um, and um, in the in the next the generation before us, there was Paul Newman was there, and Geraldine Page and Rip Torn and Joanne Woodward. So right. um, we got to learn from them, and they got to support us. Um, it was an extraordinary time to be at the studio in the 60s. Um, oh, yeah. You know. It was a smaller world back then. There was no internet. Everybody knew each other. Everybody hung out more, it seemed. You know, it was like yeah. a real camaraderie. Yeah. A lot of support. Mm -hmm. um, but the actor studio still lives and breathes. It's just a few blocks away from where I lived in West Hollywood on DeLongpre every Friday. Mm -hmm. How did you uh, come to meet Andy Warhol? Uh, my mother my mother gave him his first publicity in Life magazine. His shoes, whatever he was designing at the time, and uh, he had a crush on her, and she introduced me to him, I think, 1964, around then. 65, mm -hmm. um, and he asked me to be one of the 13 most beautiful women in his film, 13 Most Beautiful Women, along with Edie Sedgwick, I think. Right. Baby Jane Holzer, a bunch of people. Um, what's her name? Ah, oh, well, I'm spacing out. Um, famous, beautiful, blonde model actress, Nick, Nico? Nico, yeah. Yeah, and um, and then I hung out at the factory with him, and uh, I remember I was asked to um, celebrate his birthday at some point. So me and his right hand person Gerard Malanga came out of the fifteen foot cake mm -hmm. um, and did the twist. You know, I don't know whether that was the early sixties. I can't remember, but sixty one. Remember being. 
Yeah, I remember being in an eeny weeny bikini and <laughs> having Ken Scott jewelry all over my body and doing the twist and the jewelry, the jewelry flying through the air. And um, and Andy, of course, loved it. And um, I remember when I did Anna, I called up Andy and I said, you know, we don't have money for public relations. Can can you help us with our publicity? And he said, sure. So he had me and Paulina interview each other, Paulina Perspova, and then he walked through us, between us, in the middle of the interview. That was our first publicity for Anna, for which I got the Oscar nomination yep. and won the Golden Globe, et cetera. Um, so he, that was 87, and I think he died shortly after that. Yeah, um, 87 is when he died. I, that woman who shot him, uh, in the chest, I remember he opened his shirt and showed me his wounds. Um, uh, he had a scar all the way down his torso. Mm -hmm. um, that was sad. Yeah. And he was great. You know, he was uh, so quiet, so shy, but everything went on around him all the time. In 1968, you became the first uh, naked woman of theater with Sweet Arrows. This was way before O Calcutta, and yeah. it was pretty bold at the time. Were you comfortable being naked on stage at that point in your career? Yeah, and Tom O'Horkin had directed me in the La Mama troupe, and um, I was so happy that I beat him to nudity. He did nudity in hair when he directed <laughs> hair, but, but I did Sweet Arrows before. So that was a healthy competition. And, um, yeah, I sat on stage for 45 minutes nude. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what was the reaction like? Did you get good reviews? Yeah, I got great reviews. Um, I think at some point the Times asked me why I did it, and I said, you can't carry a gun on a naked body. <laughs> Most of the Vietnam War. <laughs> How long did it run for? Um, I think a year. The year, wow, that that is, that is bold. I, I commend you on that. Wh what was it like working with Robert Mitchum on Going Home? Oh well, I was so in awe of him, mm -hmm. and um, I uh, would sit and listen to his stories, sit at his feet. I'm going to eat enchiladas as I talk to you. Okay. Um, and um, he was great. He he smoked a lot of marijuana. <laughs> I can't remember whether he got me doing it with him. Yeah. But he was, you know, his stories were the greatest. Oh, yeah, I heard he was a good storyteller. Um, did you uh, did you work with Brenda Vaccaro on that? Yeah, Brenda was in the actor's studio also. And so we knew each other from before. And um, she's great, great actress. Very talented, yes. Now, you got to be in many Roger Corman movies in the 70s. The, the Young Nurses, Candy Stripe Nurses, Big Bad Mama, Crazy Mama. It, it seems to be Corman always had like a camp of regulars. Uh, whether it's Jack Nicholson, Bruce Dern, Ron Howard, Martin Scorsese, Francis Coppola, all before they broke. How did you um, end up in the Corman camp at that time? Kelly Winters introduced me to Roger in 1969. Mm -hmm. and, and De Niro. She right. introduced, I brought Bobby to Shelley, and then Shelley brought Bobby to Roger, and he did Bloody Mama. I was supposed to be in Bloody Mama, but but Roger's brother had a girlfriend named Diane Barcy. Mm -hmm. As I said on the phone last week when I talked to you, that uh, you know, I talked to Steve Carver, who directed Big Bad Mama before he passed, and um, in that movie, uh, you played Dick Miller's girlfriend, another great guy we lost uh, recently. Uh, wh what do you remember about doing uh, Big Bad Mama? Oh, God. <laughs> Horace Leachman, was she in that? No, that That's was Crazy, crazy Mama. Mama. That's Andrew crazy. Andrew Dickinson. Right. Um, I remember playing a housewife a mother. Um, I remember being awed by Angie, who couldn't have been sweeter to me. Mm -hmm. um, Stuart Whitman was in that? No, that was Crazy Mama. Crazy Mama. Um, you played Dick Miller's girlfriend in Big Bad Mama. Oh, Dick Miller, right. That's a long time ago. 
<laughs> Dick Dick was a great guy. I got to meet him at one of his last uh, autograph shows, and I interviewed his wife a few years ago. Um, do you remember anything about him? No. No. When you did uh, Crazy Mama, uh, Jonathan Demme directed that. What was he like to work with? I think that was his uh, first or second movie. Right. Um, he was great. You know, he was as brilliant then as he became. Yeah. You knew then that he was brilliant? Yeah. Yeah. He, he um, was a definite Roger Corman protege. Yeah. He was so talented. Cloris Leachman, um, what was she like to work with? Well, Cloris was in the actor's studio. So she and I had known each other since the um, years before that. Um, she's great. She's very down to earth mm -hmm. um, and, and very incredible as an actor. And Stuart Whitman, he was, he was great too. What was he like? really nice to me mm -hmm. and um, I'm eating my enchiladas it's okay um, yeah I mean he was an established star and I was kind of odd to play his wife um, mm -hmm. that's all I remember um, how did you come to uh, work with Barbara Streisand on a couple of movies um, damn it, what's her name? I can't think of the name of this casting director who championed me. Lynn Stallmaster? And, um, say it again? Lynn Stallmaster? No. Um, there's a woman. But she put me in the way we were. Mm -hmm. And, um... And I got to know Robert Redford, and then he uh, he um, suggested me for the sting. Mm -hmm. And Barbara liked me. She said that I was a klutz, like she was. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think she masterminded my being in A Star is Born. Mm -hmm. And we became friends. And I remember swimming a lot at her pool in Bel Air. I remember going to cheese stores to get all different kinds of cheese with her. Mm -hmm. um, she wanted to meet Bobby De Niro and Raul Julia, so I I set that up. Um, yeah. She was great. Yeah, D didn't she go to the actor's studio, but after you or something? Yeah, yeah, she played the Juliet and I played the nurse. And Romeo and Juliet, and Strasberg said it was his favorite um, he had ever seen of, of Romeo and Juliet. Wow. And she, yeah, she was married to Elliot Gould at that time, too. Yeah. Elliot is a good friend. He's great. Yeah. Very, very good actor. So, yeah, The Sting, I, I love this movie. It's one of my favorite comedy movies of all time. So, so Redford, he, he uh, championed you to uh, be cast? Yeah, he, um, George Ray Hill wanted to go to Vegas to get a, a, a busty woman, and and Redford said, no, 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 Sally Kirkland, so I got it. Wow, wow, yeah, uh, did you have to take strip lessons for the part? No, I had been a go-go dancer. Oh, okay. So you, so you. I, I knew how to do all that. Mm -hmm. So you knew how to do all that, yeah. I I I love the uh, the way you looked in this movie. You did look like someone of that period, you know, in in the nineteen thirties with uh, your hair uh, colored brown that way. Curled, yeah. yeah, yeah. Did did you have more to do in the movie, but was cut? Mm -hmm. No. That was all you had to do. Right. Yeah, she. Yeah, I just love how you know she has to miss a, another show just to watch him lose money. <laughs> right. Next time you want to spend fifty bucks on me, mail it. Exactly. Yeah. David David S. Ward. He is such a brilliant writer. This must have been a hard movie for him to write because the movie is full of so many great mindfuck cons. You know. Uh huh. 
you know. George Roy Hill, what was he like as a director? Um, he was great. My audition for him, um, I remember bringing a tape recorder, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, a, a cassette player with me to the audition, and I had on a bikini underneath my wraparound dress, and I, I put on George Harrison's Apple Jam. Yeah. Um, I started dancing and ultimately taking off my dress and sitting on George Ray Hill's lap in my Amy Winnie bikini. And he had these big eyes, and his big eyes really popped out. He was so shocked. <laughs> so, but I got the part. Sounds like you were trying to do Mae West. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Did you ever meet her? No, no, that's before my time. Oh, okay. How did you uh, come to be the cashier in Blazing Saddles? Um, I, I, a good casting director. Um, mm -hmm. can't remember. But Mel Brooks was great, and I said, you know, I've just done this thing the way we were. Um, Mel, I, I don't think I want to take a credit for this because it's such a small part. So he said, okay. So to this day, it remains the uncredited Sally Kirk one in Blazing Saddles. Well, it's memorable. You know, you got that great line, Yankee bean soup, coleslaw, and tuna surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Tommy. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that that's the, the pie fight in the uh, Warner Brothers commissary. Was that the actual commissary? I don't know. Yeah. Um, long time ago, yeah. I know. Long time ago, yeah. But Mel Brooks, how great was he? He was great and so sweet. Really, what a sweet guy. He's totally in love with Anne Bancroft. Just, they were like young kids. Oh, was she on set? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She that... was a member of the Actors Studio, so I knew her from there. Yeah, we lost her way, way too soon. Yeah. You know, she 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 should she should still be alive now, still making movies. I mean, yes, she was, I agree. She was wonderful. Yeah. Now you lent your voice to Robert Strauss's last movie and probably his only lead role in the Noah. And I watched it on YouTube the other night. Uh, but how did you get involved with that? Gosh, I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. It reminded me of Dark Passage because we see the camera's point of view the whole time and you hear voices. Yeah, it was a pretty interesting movie. Um, you got to work with some greats on Bite the Bullet, uh, Gene Hackman, Candy Gene Bergen. Hackman, that was the, the longest shoot I ever did. It was 10 weeks. And we were in um, Colorado, Arizona. I can't remember. But we were definitely out there in cowboy land. And... Um, uh, Richard Brooks used to scream at me a lot. He was kind of a misogynist. I heard. And Gene Hackman and James Coburn would always come to my defense and protect me. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I, I heard that about him. Um, yeah, that was, that's interesting. Do you remember working with John Ritter on Three's Company? Yeah, and, and he was my lover. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I remember it well. He was great. Um, so sad that he died so soon. Yeah, I remember that episode so well. Jack needs extra money, uh, so he becomes a nude model, and you're a nude model right. as well. There I am. I, that was the first nudity on television. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's pretty bold. Um, do you remember how you got that? I think, again, just the casting director. Just the casting director. Yeah, I mean, you've always been the type of actor that's pretty much game for anything. Say it again, Tommy? You, you've always been pretty much the actor that's game for anything. Yeah. Adventurous. Adventurous, yeah. Uh, the, the, the British actors, they're that way, too. They, they love to work. They will just do anything. Uh-huh. Yeah, did, did, did you have any British actors in your life that kind of mentored you? Well, Michael Caine and Roger Moore, when we did Bite the Bullet, you know, Bullseye. I learned a lot from just watching them and listening to them. You mean Bullseye? Bullseye. I'm sorry. Bullseye. Yeah. That's the first movie I ever saw you in, by the way. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, it used to be on HBO all the time when I was a kid. Because I don't, I don't think it lasted very long in theaters. I uh, don't remember. <laughs> How about, uh, do you remember uh, guest starring on The Incredible Hulk? 
Yeah, Bill Bixby was great to me, and he said extraordinary things about my work, and so I took out a full page from Variety and had a picture of Bill mm -hmm. with his quotes about me, and that got me a whole bunch of jobs. So he was very supportive. He was a good friend of uh, my great aunt. My my great aunt was the um, head of craft services at the Hilton in San Francisco, and um, he would go down there with the family. And um, he, him and my uh, great aunt they had a great relationship. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, he was a wonderful man. Again, it's so sad that he died. Yeah, he was he was great. The the classic lesbian elevator scene in Private Benjamin. Yeah, nobody wanted to play a lesbian back then. It was a seven hundred dollar job, and I said, "Why not?" And so I did it. I'm very proud of myself. What, what, um, was, what was Eileen Brennan like? Oh, she was great and wonderful actress, of course, and she had been in the Sting also. Yes. Um. Anyway, we we had a, a great time on Private Benjamin. Uh. And I got to know Goldie Hawn a little bit, and she was great. Oh, yes. That's, that's a great movie. It's got a great positive message about bouncing back from being a widow. Uh-huh. It's such a great movie. Howard Zeef was the director. What do you remember about him? Just that he, he let me do what I wanted. You know, he was very uh, supportive of me. Um, and I was thrilled to work with him. Yeah. Um, did you meet his um, his his uh, his, his ex girlfriend Jane Halloran? No. Okay, she was. Uh, a... I mean, not that I remember. I might have. Yeah, she was a New York actress, and I, I've had her on the show. She's very interesting. Were you were you a production assistant on Savannah Smiles? I was. That was probably my entrance into film. Um, was that nineteen eighty two? Eighty two. Well, no, I had done all the Corman films and whatnot, but, but I did that because um, Mark Miller's wife uh, was in my church, the Movement of Spiritual Inner Awareness, mm -hmm. and I got to know Mark Miller, and he asked me if I would do that, and I said, sure. And uh, unfortunately, the girl who played Savannah committed suicide. Yeah. Bridget Anderson, yeah, I, I remember her from a lot of things back in the 80s. She was so adorable. I, I think that she could have been a big star when, when she grew up, but sadly yeah. she didn't. Oh, my God. Yeah, I love that movie. It was a huge staple in my house when I was growing up, and I interviewed the guy, the guy who did the music, Ken Sutherland. I interviewed his daughter last year for the 40th anniversary of the movie. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. She, she takes Small a lot. world. She takes a lot of pride for the movie, yeah, and that her father was involved in it. It's it's such a cute movie. And also, um, the guy who played Mark Miller's friend in it, Donovan Scott, I've interviewed him, too. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Fatal Games. I, I grew up watching it on USA Up All Night when I was a kid. What was it like? Really? Yeah, it was on all the time. What was it like playing a slasher villain? <laughs> um... Mac Mankiewicz, Chris Mankiewicz, uh, son or relative, either son or anyway, he was the son of the of the Mankiewicz, Joe Mankiewicz, and he was the producer, and he talked me into doing that, and um, I ended up having a blast. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people know that movie more than they know Anna. Yeah. <laughs> which I got the nomination, so there's a little cult following for Fatal Games. Well, horror fans um, are huge. There's a lot of horror fans out there. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Tommy. Um, yeah. yeah, I had a blast. Yeah, you you get to massage Linnea Quigley before anybody knew who Linnea Quigley was. And you and her were on the Chuck Woolery show years later, and you both remembered each other but didn't remember the name of the movie. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank you for knowing that. It, it had a couple of different names, that's why. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember what the um, the initial name was, but it became Fatal Games when it went to video and, of course, TV. So it's it's one of those things. So when you get the role of Anna, I mean, this has to be the most important role you ever played in terms of personal and spiritual growth. 
Yeah, and and um, awards. Yeah. Um, I got the Oscar nomination for Best Actress and the Golden Globe. I won, and I won the Independent Spirit Award, and I won the Los Angeles Film Critics Award, and I think the Women in Film Award. Um, mm -hmm. It was an extraordinary role. The minute I read the script, I knew that it would go to the Oscars. Uh, it's just a genius role, I thought. My name is Anna Rokova. I come from Prague, Czechoslovakia. What you want? I don't want to talk about my personal life. Give me the script. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And check. My, my mother's building in New York, the back elevator man, was Cleo, and he was Czech. So I invited him over and gave him a bottle of wine and had him read all the lines, taped him, and then I, you know, learned my Czech accent. Yeah. Uh, were you sh were you uh, shocked that you won the Golden Globe? No, no. I I, I knew I would. Mm -hmm. that, were, you disapp um, were you disappointed you lost the Oscar? Yes, very. That was a good year. That was Meryl Streep and Glenn Close. And Cher. Holly Hunter and Cher. And, of course, Cher won for Moonstruck. Absolutely. Did you, did you enjoy, you know, having that kind of, you know, award show cachet in that time? Yes, very much. Right. Very much. So the whole experience was great. Yep. Yeah, um, Jenna Rollins was standing with me. We were both waiting for a limousines at some big Hollywood event. And she said, I voted for you. And I said, oh, thank you. And she said, well, I didn't see the movie, but I, I voted for you because of your campaign. Oh. I thought that was great. That, that was very nice. Yeah. And uh, what's his name? Cassavetes. He was still alive at that time, right? I think, yeah. Yeah, did you know him? Um, I met him with Bob Dylan. I mean, I was dating Bob Dylan at the time, and we went to the Troubadour, and there was John and Jenna Cassavetes. And... Um, uh, yeah, he introduced me to him, and he was very sweet, very sweet. Uh, then you do the uh, Best of the Best uh, with Eric Roberts, who I've had on the show. Great guy. Uh, what's, yeah. What, what's he like to work with? I've about five movies with him, but I can't think of the titles. Oh, wow. Was this the first one? Um, that was the first one, yeah. Yeah, was that a fun shoot? Yeah, and I got to teach everybody yoga. <laughs> I've been a yoga teacher at the Integral Yoga Institute for for a couple of decades. Wow. Three decades. Yeah, it's funny. When he came on here, like his wife Eliza had been on before. And uh -huh. I, I asked her to come back on because I wanted to get into some stuff we didn't talk about last time. She brought Eric with her without telling me, and I was so shocked and nervous and surprised so i'm asking her my prepared questions for her and i'm coming up with questions going on his imdb as i'm talking to her and i don't think i did the best job you know under pressure but at least i got some sex education out of it because um they were they were promoting a sex toy that their friend invented called the rocket and who, how many people can say that they got some sex education from eric roberts not many <laughs> you know <laughs> So it was great overall, and I met them at a convention uh, before that. And they're just down to earth, sweet people. They're so in love; it's great. Yeah, I know and th those those kind of um, Hollywood uh, marriages they don't last long. Yeah, no, they're they're beyond beyond so in love. They they are they are awesome. How about the black cat segment of Two Evil Eyes? With with uh, Harvey Keitel. Yeah. Yeah, that's a famous director, right? Um, uh, Dario Argento. Yeah, very famous Italian director. Yeah, that was great. And he, he let me uh, design the costume the way I would look. I thought that they, he made me look more beautiful than 90% of the directors I work with, the way he lit me and everything. Oh, but you're beautiful in everything. Thank you, Tommy. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Did he speak English or was he speaking Italian? Um, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. I just remember liking him so much. And you had the the legendary Marty Balsam and Kim Hunter in that segment as well. 
Well, we were around them. Mm -hmm. um, Marty Balsam's in the Actors Studio. So is Kemp Hunter. Yeah. We're all Actors Studio people. Right. And I think they were blacklisted during the McCarthy era. Yeah. Yeah, they're the generation ahead of me. Yeah, did they talk about that? No. No. But, but God bless them. Is that the only time you worked with Keitel? No. Um, well, he and I were in acting class together with a man named Frank Corsaro, director, mm -hmm. um, way back in 1961. So Harvey would have been the first actor I met in show business. So yeah, with Bullseye, uh, working with Roger Moore and Michael Caine, so that was just a lot of laughs, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We we shot a lot of it on the on a train uh, from England to Scotland. Is that possible? Probably. Uh, I, is that possible? Well, there's that anyway. scene. There's there's that scene during the parade where they're in kilts. So maybe Scotland. Yeah, I kept wanting to uh, look up their kilts. And... <laughs> They were all the time testing out restaurants. It was all about food. They all wanted to go to, the two of them wanted to go to every restaurant there was and be feted um, with the great foods of, of Scotland. <laughs> um, he was great. I, I talked to him into writing a book, and he wrote a book about acting. Oh, yeah, Michael, the Michael Caine book of acting, yeah. Yeah, he, um, because he would tell these great stories. And I said, Michael, this is wasted on us. Why don't you write a book? And he did. When, when, when Howard Stern made his movie, he watched Michael Caine's like, acting instructor's video to learn how to act. <laughs> yeah. Instead of actually Howard take... Stern was great. He would call me at 3 in the morning, mm -hmm. which would be his 6 o'clock in the morning, Yeah. And, and have me talk when I was half asleep. I remember when you were on his show, you're like sitting on his lap and he's like, you know, I had just, no clothes on, right? I took my top off. I don't remember that one, but this, this particular one you had clothes on and he was just rubbing your leg. And you said during the, inter the, um, you know, post-show interview that the, the best sex is feeling and not necessarily penetration. I agree with that to, to an extent. Uh-huh. That's a, that's a great thing. I didn't know that. That's a great thing. Uh, that's a that's a great um, you know little tidbit there, and I I agree with that. Um, working with uh, Michael Winner, I, I've I've heard that that guy was a nightmare to work with. Did you have that experience? Yeah, he he would scream at me a lot, but like I said before, Michael Caine and Roger Moore would protect me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he would say, um, Michael Roger. Um, you don't have to be here. It's just Miss Kirkland's close up. And they said, Well, we wanna we're here to protect her against you. Oh. That that that's great though that they had your back like that. Yeah. That was wonderful. I love Amnesia. Your performance is so creepy and disturbing. And oh. I had a huge crush on you in this when I was like fifteen. Wow. That's great, Tommy. I was an associate producer on that. Mm-hmm. I think I talked, um, uh, Amy, oh, what's her name? Um, uh, the other actress, um. Ali Sheedy? Ali Sheedy into yeah. being in it, yeah. Uh, so, I, uh, used to hang out with her a lot, and that was one of my contributions as associate producer to get her, um, well, what's the name of that? Male lead. N Nicholas Walker. Again? Nicholas Walker. Chris Walker? Nick Nicholas Walker. Oh, Nicholas Walker, right, right. Yeah. He was great to work with. And we had to do that nude scene. So that's, that's always um, interesting when you don't know the actor well and you have to take your clothes off and pretend you do. Oh, yeah. That can that can always be awkward, from what I've been told. Yeah, when when, when you're like listening to the wall, you remind me of me when I was twelve. My brother, oh, yeah. my brother and I, we had rooms next to each other. Right, he would bring some girl home, you know, and stuff, and I would listen to them. So it was it was something I could relate to at that time. Oh wow, 
Yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh. Yes. And I have to say, when you're not wearing makeup, you are so you are still as gorgeous as you are with makeup. Oh, thank you, Tommy. Wow. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. No so, one's ever said that to me before. Oh well, they're fools. <laughs> oh. So, what made you get into the ministry? Um. Well, in 1969, mm -hmm. um, in 66, I had a nervous breakdown and tried to kill myself and all that, mm -hmm. and was pronounced dead. Yeah. Um, and then I had a life after life experience, and um, Christ was there, and. Um, Shortly after that, I read the book Autobiography of a Yogi, mm -hmm. and then I looked for my Yogananda, mm -hmm. um, and it became a man named Swami Sachidananda. In 1969, he initiated me mm -hmm. um, and gave me the name Satya, S-A-T-Y-A, which means truth. Right. And I taught yoga for him for three decades, and somewhere... Along about 1972, I met this man named John Roger, who founded the Movement of Spiritual Inner Awareness, and I was blown away by him, and I thought, wow, I'm home. And he talked about soul transcendence and being able to go home to God mm -hmm. and complete your karma this lifetime, where the Hindus and the Buddhists talked about lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. So I thought, wow, that's incredible. So I uh, got initiated by him in 1973 mm -hmm. um, and had been on that path till this day. And um, he died in 2014. Anyway, I got ordained in 1975, the Reverend Sally Kirkland, and um, I'm happy to say that I'm a minister in the movement of spiritual and awareness for 50 years. And um, it's, it's a beautiful way to live your life because show business can be very filled with rejection and, yeah. you know, ego and all that. And so being on the spiritual path where every day I meditate for some hours, or at least an hour, um, keeps me on the straight and narrow. Oh. So, that is wonderful. I, I for your, for, for your uh, mm -hmm. listeners, readers, whatnot. Um, if you go to msia.org, msia.org, you can find out everything Sally's been into for fifty years. Right. I I had a car accident in 2015, and I spent 30 days in a coma. Oh my God. Yes. And oh my God. Every day I'm grateful to, to that God gave me a second chance. It was just the most profound thing in the world. And oh my God, I've never met anyone who's been in a coma. I was in a coma for a week, but not thirty days. Oh my God. Yeah, it's it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, you're just you're you're half conscious, half awake. You you don't you don't know why you don't have the strength to get up. You're just you're just laying there. You don't know what's going on. It's a very it's a very weird experience. Oh, for sure. And people who have I'm never been you're here. And people who have never been in a coma, they don't understand it and they, they couldn't possibly imagine. It's it's something you really have to be in in order to get it. Right. I <clears throat> I got into a coma because of a diving accident where I went running on the diving board and slipped and my body went in the water but my head hit the cement the side of the pool, and I was in a coma. I think it was 10 days. And when I came out of it, I was deaf in my left ear. Oh. Now I'm deaf in my left ear. I'm sorry about that. How long ago was that? Well, like I said, I was like um, very young, maybe t 10 or 12. Oh, okay. It was in the 50s then, long time ago. And say it again? It was probably in the, it was okay, it was in the 50s then. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You're a survivor, Sally. You really are. <laughs> Do you still teach acting? Um, I haven't this year, but I sure did for years and years and years. I taught Sandra Bullock. Yeah. And um, I coached Liza Minnelli. And Roseanne? Wanted, Roseanne, yeah. They wanted to learn how to cry on cue. <laughs> so I did something called an emotional recall. 
both of them had, or Barbara particularly, had a lot of emotion with her father, who she never really knew because he he died when she was really young. Mm -hmm. So we would do an emotional recall, and, and with her eyes shut, she would talk to her father, and the tears would come and all that. Wow. Do you get satisfaction teaching that you don't get when you're actually acting? Oh, no, I like them both equally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's no contest between them? No. And, and, and you like being a minister as much, too? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I, uh, I guess I've done 273 movies. Mm-hmm. Our movies and television starring roles, and um, I've been a minister 50 years. It's been an extraordinary life. I'm 82 now, um, and I don't plan on stopping anything. Yeah, did are you going to write a memoir? Huh. Um, I have a friend named J.R. O'Neill who has uh, recorded um, nine audio chapters of my life mm -hmm. and we're going to Bob Dylan is the 10th and then that will be released somehow wonderful it's going to be like a Kindle or yeah yeah yeah, the, the digital book thing now, it's it's become very popular, you know. Back in the day, it was just, you know, a companion to the paper book, but now, like, people are, are not wanting to write necessarily. They just want to talk and get the story out there. Uh, yeah. I think yours will do well because, I mean, you got all these great stories here. You've had these Zelig-like moments in show business and life. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. Thanks for your enthusiasm. Of course. And how's your health? My health is great. No problems with my health. Good. Um, I swim. I have a pool here. I swim. Um, and I can't do yoga anymore because I I busted my right knee, so oh. I have a fake knee now. Oh. Uh, I can't get on the floor and get up kind of thing. But, um, but I swim, and I walk, and... Um, I suggest swimming for everybody. Yeah. Um, I've gotten into swimming um, a little bit more than I have earlier in life because I got um, I got metal in my leg because I broke my leg in seven places during my car crash. So I do a lot more hanging out in the pool than I ever right. have. Yeah, I've got metal and screws in my right foot. And then I've got this piece of sculpture on my right knee. <laughs> <laughs> sculpture? <laughs> I like well, that. Well, you laugh, but the doctor who put it in me was a sculptor. Oh. <laughs> and he would describe what he was going to do as putting in a piece of sculpture in my knee. Oh, yeah, the arthritis must be pretty bad. Yeah, um, I, I admit I have arthritis all over, and it's my, it's my weak point. Um... I guess you're not supposed to eat tomatoes. There's certain things you're not supposed to eat if you have arthritis. Interesting. Um, but uh, when it's raining, it's a killer. Yeah, that is pretty bad for me, I'll tell you. I'm, I'm so glad that we finally got some sun over here now because during the winter time, I was hurting, I'll tell you. So, do you have any upcoming projects you'd like to mention? Um. Well, there's one. I don't want to say the name of it because it's still in negotiation. But uh, just one. Um, and uh, 80 for Brady is out. I, I saw my mom watching that the other night. I got I got to sit down and watch it. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. It's Paramount. Paramount something. You can see it. Paramount Plus. Oh. Yeah. 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 Was that a lot of fun? Did your mother like it? She did. She thought it was funny. Oh, good. Yeah, I have two scenes with Rita Moreno, who's great. She's 91 and so youthful. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady's from my hometown. He's six years older than I am. And really? Yeah, I know a lot What's of people. What's your hometown? San Mateo, California. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. A lot of, lot of uh, actors came from San Mateo. My mom uh, went to high school with Dennis Haysbert. They were in the same class. Uh -huh. They knew each other from kindergarten through senior year in high school. And wow. um, 
Merv Griffin, Barry Bostwick, Chris Christopherson, they're all from San Mateo. Chris Christopherson was my lover. <laughs> Barry Bostwick and I acted together, and Merv Griffin, I was on his show five times. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. Uh, I, I love how you, you, ad- you admit who's your lover. That's so awesome. Yeah. I love that. Uh, so, he was great. Oh, he was? Yeah. <laughs> great He's- lover. He's still alive. I heard his health is not too good, but he's still around. He lives in Hawaii, I think. Yeah. With his wife. Sally, you are a special lady and a national treasure. Thank you so much for coming on today. This oh, has been... yeah. Thank you, Tommy, for having me. We'll do it again. Yes, this is such a, 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 a this has been such a tremendous honor. I'm going to go cry because dreams do come true. Oh, thank you, honey. God bless you. God bless you. Be safe out there. Have a great day, and I'm going to be looking forward to that audio book. Okay. I'll let you know. Thank you okay, so much. Okay, honey. God bless. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Sally Kirkland. Ain't she a sweetheart? Oh, my God. I'm so glad we could have this conversation today. What a sweet lady. And so honest and open. I like it. So-and-so is my lover. I love <laughs> I love hearing that. Oh, my God, she's a lot of fun. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.